This episode of Chicago's Bravest Stories is brought to you by Fire Consultant Corporation. Fire science is a field full of passion, excitement, and valor. Although the brothers and sisters of the firefighting industry are all cut from a different cloth, the one trait that weaves everyone together in firefighting industry is the hunger to do something with meaning. If this same passion drives you and you're interested in the fire science EMS career, Fire Consultant Corporation can be your guiding light to a successful professional journey. Fire Consultant provides learning workshops that will educate you on what it takes to become a firefighter. Each workshop is filled with concise, high-quality, step-by-step information on the world of fire science and EMS. Go to fire-consultant.com to find out more information on their next workshop and to find their social media handles to keep updates on everything fire science and EMS. This episode also brought to you by FNX supplements and apparel if you're in need of great reliable and safe supplements to help you through the hard workouts look no further fnx premier supplement and fitness apparel supplier founded by athletes like brooke entz camille leblanc bazinet all their gear and supplements uh, follow strict guidelines set forth by the world anti-doping association and are strictly regulated by the FDA. With no fillers, no tainted ingredients, they have pre-workouts, super greens, proteins, recovery, and CBD. Check them out at fnxfit.com. And if you use the referral code Chicago's Bravest, you'll get 15% off their supplements and workout apparel. Again, fnxfit.com and use our referral code Chicago's Bravest and get 15% off. Thanks again for listening. We're here with uh, author of the book, Hey New Guy, Severin Henderson. Hi, Severin. How are you? I'm great. How are you today? Good. Uh, We have you in here to talk about your book. Uh, Can you give us a little background on this book? So, Hey New Guy, The Candidate's Guide to a Long, Strong, and Healthy Career is a book I have been writing for a couple of years. Then, all of a sudden, after I started instructing at the Fire Academy, I got inspiration to go ahead and knock it out and continue doing what I was doing. So is this kind of um, a guide to a new firefighter coming on the job? Well, what I look at it is not just a new firefighter, but a new person in the entire world of public safety. Um, The reason I say that, because that's the background I come from. Of course, I'm a firefighter, I'm a paramedic. But I also went to police academy, and I have experience in that aspect of safety, too. So I was trying to pitch to just the whole safety service as a whole. Okay. And how long have you been a fireman? Overall combined. Ooh, I wasn't prepared for that question. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You knew I was going to ask. Yeah. That's all all in the book. Um, um, I started volunteering when I was... 16, 17 years old. I got hired, hired on my first part-time department when I was 18 years old, and I am now 39. So Okay, so somebody will, will do the math when they read the book. Yes. <laughs> but it's safe to say that you've gathered a good chunk of knowledge over your career, and you're kind of passing that on to other people. Um, is this a book that you wish you would have had when you started? Absolutely. Um, a lot of times i have been thinking about writing this book for a long time and i remember talking about with buddies about it how i was gonna write it and they're like oh that'd be a good idea that'd be a good idea and i kind of looked for a book like this in the space and i found a couple and they're good i just feels like this one is everything is it it helps out a lot so i would love to have had this information presented to me when i first started okay um give us an example of like a nugget in the book that might help somebody a nugget in the book. Um, one of the most important nuggets in the book to me is getting along with people. A lot of people are already kind of set in their ways. And even when you're a young person, you're kind of used to your friends, used to your buddies, you know, you have uncles and maybe a grandfather, but now you're working with those people that are the same age as maybe some of your older uncles, your dad or your grandfather. And you have to know how to speak to those people, how they are going to speak to you, how to operate. It's called emotional intelligence. And I talk about that in the book. And I feel like that 
is an aspect that'll help a new person go really far in his career? Well, you know, we we both um, work uh, for the fire service, and you know, we both know that there are guys that you're going to bump heads with Absolutely. in your house or you know, uh, in your uh, district or whatever the case is. How do you like? What do you tell a new guy that is just you can't get through this old guy who's been setting his ways. He's salty. <laughs> and you know, you're the new guy, like, you know, uh, in our profession, the new guy doesn't really have much say in the matter, you know? Right. The new guy doesn't have much of a voice at all. No, not at all. And I explained that you don't have a voice at all, but what you don't want to do is just get down on yourself. You don't want to get in the dumps. You don't want to take and carry that, those bad situations, those negative situations with you. You kind of want to overcome. You want to talk to somebody about it, whether it's when you go home and talk to your friends. Another suggestion I have in the book is find a person in the firehouse that you can feel comfortable with and talk to them. And there's always a resolution to any situation. It's just how we come to those resolutions, you know, by speaking. Communication is always the key. Communication and comprehension. You can't just talk. You can talk all day, but once you understand I feel like that is what makes a situation able to be solved. Well, you know, that that's great advice. I think that for a new guy with no voice in the firehouse or, you know, the police department, I think your voice is actually your actions and you're judged on that. Absolutely. You, you may not be judged on the things that you say, but you're definitely going to be judged on how you conduct yourself and how you, um, how you, you know, your work ethic and, you know, whether that's mopping a floor yep. or, you know, uh, being a busy guy on the fire ground. Yep. Um, in different cities, I have a couple of buddies that work um, in southern Ohio. Well, central Ohio, rather. And they call it squirreling around. And they just all day busy doing something. They squirreling under the engine. They squirreling under the truck. They squirreling under their ambos. Just looking for loose screws, <laughs> oiling <laughs> things up. So staying busy is something I definitely preach to put in the book actions always speak louder than words and that goes with leadership even guys from the front you know when you're the guy in charge you still want to show the actions that you're putting forth the effort to work because you you always want to show that you're about doing this career like i said for, well like you said from police to paramedic and the fire just the safety service this first responder public safety service actions always are paramount so what uh, what other things you got going on that is kind of a uh, complement with this book? I, I know you, you got your hands in all kinds of um, self-help uh, guides and stuff like that to, you know, help people. I know you have a blog and stuff like that. Where can people find you? Well, right now I'm having a website built because I'm not super techie, so someone can help me <laughs> with that. But I We'll get you somebody. I have the website. It's department3c.com. And there I talk about everything, like you said, self-help, self-motivation, um, ownership, um, leadership, all of those qualities that kind of help and push you. And it's not just for your career. Actually, it's for your entire life just to, you know, it's to, to me, I feel like it's best if you help each one be a better one. So everybody helps everybody. I'm a glass half full type of guy. <laughs> Did you uh, did you get any pushback from the title "Hey New Guy" from female firefighters, female police officers? Actually, a female is the one who helped me come up <laughs> with the "Hey New Guy." Um, before it was "Hey New Guy, get over here," and she said you should shorten it to "Hey New Guy." And I said, "You don't think it's um, a problem with it saying guy?" She said, "No, because we know who you're talking to. You're talking to the new person, a new guy." Guy isn't God doesn't offend me, so I don't see why God would offend anyone else. But right, I mean, it's you're the new guy, new guy. Period. Yeah, right. You know, no matter what your gender is, exactly. The term "new guy" is gender neutral, as far as I'm concerned. It, yes, I agree. That's what, and she brought that to my attention. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, and I, uh, I know we're uh, we were talking earlier about. Um, uh, you've been instructor for uh, down at Academy for uh, a little while now. And uh, how are things going down there with, um, you know, the we're in the middle of the pandemic right now. So uh, how are things uh, affecting you as an instructor? 
slightly difficult, but I am ecstatic to still be there and still educating the kids. Well, I shouldn't call them kids, the candidates, sorry. Um, <laughs> but it is a little difficult because we have to stay away. So we, you know, we everybody, people tend to want to hang out in groups. But we always got to say, you know, two arms length away, two arms length away, spread out, spread out, spread out. Um, we just got the masks um, maybe a monthish so or so ago. So we wear those all of the time. And it's just been a little trying, but it's nothing too difficult for a firefighter to overcome. We we make it happen. Firefighters, paramedics. Um, I can't add the police because they canceled their academy. But Did they really? <laughs> yeah, they canceled their academy. But we're still going strong and still getting getting them out to get the help out there. Okay. Um, anything else that uh, you want to talk about um, in this book? Um, something that, you know, somebody listening might be like, oh, you know what, maybe I – that's not a book for me. Like what about this book that makes it universal for any new guy getting on? Well, that's, that's, a, that's what I try to preach in the book. It, this book has something in it for everyone, not just for this service, but for every service. And I encourage older people to pass it on to some of their younger family members that they, that they know. So what, extra is in there there's recipes in there um are there really yes there are i I talk about you know because it's important one away one surefire way for a new guy to win the guys over in the firehouse is to cook a meal absolutely right absolutely one of the simplest ways to for a new guy to win his whole shift over is to make a meal is to make a meal but if he messes it up well if he messes it up though i say i say in there if you can read, you should be able to cook. So <laughs> I, I spell the directions out, and these are all recipes I made myself. And the thing that I think is special about the the recipe section of the book is I give, you, you know, we cook different meals on different days here. So I give each day its own recipe. I give the reason why. I give kind of the history, you know, here in this city. We do corned beef and pizza. I was just about to ask you, you got the corned beef recipe in there? I do. I, I have where corned beef came from and why. Okay, explain that to me because it, it's kind of an inside joke with people who know me because I can't do the corn. I can't I can't do it anymore. A lot of people can't. A lot of people don't like the corned beef. So and, give us a history about uh, about the corned beef. This is, this is something that's interesting, and I think people, a lot of people would love to hear it. Well, corned beef came from... The fire department originally, when people were taking this job, were Irish. So Irish people, for their celebrations, cooked corned beef and cabbage. But really, it wasn't corned beef because in Ireland, it was bacon. It was called a gammon or a ham. When they got here, that gammon or the ham turned into corned beef because they couldn't afford the bacon. So they just got the um, cheapest cut of beef from Jewish people and it turned in from bacon and ham for celebrations because they used to have it at weddings and um, rituals and funerals. Any any gathering of people, they would have this meal, and then it turned into corned beef. So now, and it's and it's funny because I even go back a little further. I go back to the point where kings used to have the corned beef. They started off with the corned beef, but beef was a luxury, as a delicacy because cows were only used as milking and for work. So when you had beef, you were special. So it went from high-end special, you can't have it, then turn to, okay, now that's all we're going to eat, and bacon is the good thing, and then back the other way to corned beef is the thing again where we're at right now. So that's where corned beef and cabbage came from in the fire service, especially here. Did, did you, in your research, did you find anything about why it's on a Saturday? Why, why we have it on Saturdays? No, I didn't. I didn't find out why we have it on Saturday. Um, just that we have it. Yeah. I, ne- I never found that out. But, uh, traditionally in our department, it's Saturdays are corned beef and, and pizza and pizza. Yes. Um, it, You've seen, you know, I think when I first started, it was like nobody messed with that tradition. But now I kind of see more houses kind of <laughs> getting go, away get, from getting it. away from it. Yes, um, which 
I'm all a tradition guy, but I'm okay with this one. Yes, a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people since I've came on, guys already knew what they were walking into, and they said, "I can't do that corned beef every Saturday." Yeah. My and, house, um, we still did the corned beef and pizza yeah. every Saturday, every Saturday for ten years. Are you teaching? them to make the dough from scratch in I your am. pizza recipe? Yeah. I am. Okay. You know, some people cheat and buy the buy the setups or some people just order out. It gives the cook a break. So I know that's kind of a kind of a day off day type of thing, which is cool, which is awesome. Well, some houses do it up for the pizzas, you know, yes. like they really go over the top with the pizzas. And, you know, you run the you know the the extremes where you have some houses that maybe they're busy that day and they're just like, or they don't have their cook and they're just gonna, um, just order out, Mm -hmm. which, you know, is is fine too. But then there's some, some houses, they really go over the top. Yes. That's, I put that in the book as well. That's one of the best times, like you were saying, make a meal, even if you're not making the meal, if you're helping out and you're in the kitchen, that, that goes a long way too. Well, as a new guy, you should be the first one in there. And, you know, We've all learned as the new guy, you know, what's what's the saying, you know, last one to um, go. First get one to, in, last one out. Yeah. So what everything. You should be the first one to get up to do the dishes. <laughs> yep. You know, you should be the last one to sit down at the table. Yep. And, that, and you know, I, there are I all these little about lessons all about being a new guy, you know, that, you know, we've been told and now you finally, you know, there's finally a guide to it where it's actually in the book because, you know, you don't want to be told – and just because you don't know, you don't want to be told, you know, you grab your plate, you sit down and everybody's looking at you like, hey, you got no time on the job. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Why Why did you pick that seat? Or even when you, <laughs> right. before it's time to eat, when you get there, why did you park there? Yeah. Or why did you sit down in that chair? Everyone, everything belongs to someone else. So. Yeah. Well, and you also have to be careful about, you ask somebody, hey, what's open? Mm-hmm. You know, at, referring to where you sit at the table. And inevitably, if they know you're the new, they're going to tell you to go sit where the captain sits. Right. They're always going to point to the head. Or if you have a chief in your house. Right. Yeah, sit, sit, that's sit where, right there. That's where you, there's, they're going to tell the new guy to sit yes. for his first day at that table. It's a tired joke, <laughs> but it, it's going to go on forever. Yeah. It is. It, it You know, it's little things like that that make uh, being in Firehouse pretty entertaining. Yep. To watch that uh, captain come in and there's the new guy sitting. <laughs> and see his face. Some guys, you know, they, they know the joke is coming. Um, in my old, in my first department, the joke that they always played was, hey, go ask the chief where the keys to the engine are. So the new guy, you no, know, it's no keys to the engine. So go go ask him. The turns red, gets mad, shakes his fist in the air. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's funny. So well, They always tell you to do that, like, when the chief is having a terrible day too. Yes. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So I have all of those experiences in there. And even though I'm, I'm here in this city now, like, I don't know if I said it, but I'm originally from Ohio. It says that on the back cover of the book. So that's where I started my career at. And now I'm here and I just wanted to have an overall guide. So it's not any city specific it's for the world, actually. And at the Academy, what what's nice, we have people from all over the world. Well, we used to have people from all over the world to come to do tours. And so I had a chance to speak with some farmers that are firemen from Germany. I had a couple from Costa Rica come, have people from all over the United States come. And I really enjoy giving those tours of our facilities to them and just kind of picking their brain and see what they do as compared to what we do. Well, kind of off talk off topic, but it does pertain to you. Um, do you remember your first fire as a fireman? I do. I do remember my first fire. Um, it was when I was still volunteerish. Is this Ohio? This is in Ohio. Okay. I have, I, have, I remember my first, my first day here cause it was so funny. It, it almost mirrored exactly my first day and my first full-time job in Ohio. But my first fire was an apartment fire and, went in and, you know, we put it out. It was two rooms. It was a small kitchen connected to a living room. Smoke was billowing out the back. It was a first floor. We go in, we put it out, we get a knock on it. We done, it's time to go. And my chief at the time, he's just in there through the smoke yelling and telling telling me what to do. Go over here, go over there, pull this, pull that, pull the line. And there we didn't have 
a bunch of people, as many people manpower wise as we do here. Sure. So I think it was me and three other guys that engine and truck to the next neighboring community came. And my chief is in there talking to me. And so I'm like, well, he talking. Let me take my mask off. I almost died. <laughs> I, the, the cough in my eyes turned red. I, I was almost out for the count. So what? So when you were a volunteer, how much training did you have prior to going to that fire? Um, That probably was about a year or so in. I wasn't even a... I hadn't even been to fire school yet, so it was kind of just hanging out with the guys at the firehouse. So, so you, maybe it hadn't year. been it hadn't been really hammered into you about the significance of taking that that respirator off your mask. No, it it no, it was not. I I didn't understand, um, but I understood quickly but, then. <laughs> but that was a teachable moment for you. Absolutely. That, you know, thank God that it was in a you know that you actually learned that lesson in a place where you wasn't detrimental to you. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, so. And that was just me trying to, like, like I said, this guy, he's talking and walking and standing up even I'm <laughs> on the ground on the floor and I took it off and I couldn't breathe. So yeah, he was a, he was a tough guy. Okay. Well, um, we appreciate you coming in. Um, tell people where we can uh, get this book and you know, where we can find it and um, where they can find you. Okay. Right now, the book is on Amazon in the Kindle ebook store. Also, it's a paperback copy. Copy. The title is Hey New Guy, The Canada's Guide to a Long, Strong, and Healthy Career. Um, it's a self-published book. There are going to be revisions of it eventually, but my idea is to get something out other than the sit around and not get anything out and where you can find me social media wise is at department 3c and if you would like to connect with me individually um you can follow me on every social media site at that department 3c or i am sebi okay well thanks severin uh the book hey new guy by severin henderson available um thanks for coming in thanks appreciate for it. having me